Welcome to lecture four. In this lecture, we are going to cover three different topics. The first topic involves the beta oxidation of odd numbered fatty acids. The second topic is an important one. We'll look at as to how fatty acid oxidation is regulated in cells. And in the third topic, we'll look at uh, the peroxisomal and the glyoxisomal pathway, which is slightly different from the mitochondrial beta oxidation pathway. Although most naturally occurring lipids contain fatty acids with an even number of carbon atoms, fatty acids with an odd number of carbons are common in the lipids of many plants and marine organisms. Long chain odd number fatty acids are oxidized in the same pathway as the even number fatty acids beginning at the carboxyl end of the chain. However, the substrate for the last pass through the beta oxidation sequence is a fatty acyl-CoA with 5-carbon fatty acid. When this is oxidized and cleaved, the products are acetyl-CoA and propionyl-CoA. Let me take you through an example. Now, this is a long-chain odd number fatty acid. Now, it can enter beta oxidation and it can go through normal beta oxidation pathway, similar to a saturated fatty acid, right? Like um, palmitoyl CoA, the example that we have seen before. Now, this can enter beta oxidation. It can undergo seven rounds. After the sixth round, so this is round one, two, three, four, five, six. After round six, there is the product is a five-membered acyl-CoA. This one, two, three, four, five. Now, this five-membered uh, acyl-CoA can undergo one more round of beta oxidation, and the product is propionyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA that goes up. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven acetyl-CoA is being produced, and one propionyl-CoA is produced as a result of beta oxidation of an odd number fatty acid like this. Propionyl CoA undergoes oxidation via three steps, and this involves three enzymes. The first step involves carboxylation of propionyl CoA to another molecule called as D methyl melanyl CoA and this is catalyzed by the enzyme propionyl CoA carboxylase as the name suggests it carboxylates and it uses a cofactor called as biotin we'll talk about this cofactor in the next slide the second um, reaction is the conversion of D methyl melanyl CoA uh, to L methyl melanyl CoA and this is catalyzed by the enzyme methyl melanyl CoA epimerase. And as the name suggests, it's an epimerization reaction where a, where a D isomer is getting converted to an L isomer. The third reaction is a rearrangement reaction. And the rearrangement, as you could see, is the CoA that is attached to the second carbon is being transferred to the first carbon here. Uh, so, the reaction is catalyzed by methyl melanyl CoA mutase, and it uses a cofactor coenzyme B12. So, uh, the product of the reaction is succinyl CoA. The mechanism of the reaction catalyzed by propionyl CoA carboxylase is shown in this slide. On the right, as you could see in a box, is the the mechanism, the chemical mechanism. This enzyme, propionyl CoA carboxylase, um, has a cofactor called as biotin, and biotin is attached to a lysine residue in the active site of this enzyme by a carboxyl group. Uh, the biotin residue, the biotin group, has a carboxylate attached to it. A base in the active site of this enzyme uh, deprotonates the acidic carbon 
in propionyl CoA, and as a result, enolization happens, and uh, electrons can be pushed in to abstract this carboxyl from biotin. And as a result, you will end up with D-methylmelanyl-CoA. The second step involves the conversion of D-methylmelanyl-CoA to L-methylmelanyl-CoA, which is catalyzed by the enzyme methylmelanyl-CoA epimerase. Next, L-methylmelanyl-CoA gets converted to succinyl-CoA, uh, catalyzed by methylmelanyl-CoA mutation. Conversion of L-methylmelanyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA involves a rearrangement reaction which is catalyzed by methylmelanyl-CoA mutase. Coenzyme B12 is the cofactor for this reaction. As it is for almost all enzymes that catalyze reactions of this general type. So what is the characteristics of this specific reaction? Remember, this reaction is a substitution reaction. The substitution is the alkyl substituent uh, gets substituted with a hydrogen from the adjacent carbon. So these coenzyme B12 dependent processes are among the very few enzymatic reactions in biology in which there is an exchange of an alkyl or a substituted alkyl group, that is X, with a hydrogen atom on an adjacent carbon with no mixing of the transferred hydrogen with the hydrogen of the solvent, that is water, which means that it is not taking or exchanging a hydrogen with the solvent or with a base or an acid in the active side of the enzyme. So that's the characteristics of this specific uh, reaction. Fatty acid oxidation consumes a precious fuel and it is regulated so as to occur only when the organism's need for energy requires it. When the diet provides a ready source of carbohydrate as fuel, beta-oxidation of fatty acids is not necessary and is therefore down-regulated. There are two enzymes that are key to the coordination of fatty acid metabolism. The first one is acetyl-CoA carboxylase, or ACC, which converts acetyl-CoA to melanyl-CoA. Melanyl-CoA is the first step in the synthesis of fatty acids. We'll learn about it in the next chapter. The second enzyme, which is key, is carnitine acyltransferase 1. This limits the transport of fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix for beta-oxidation. We have seen this before, right? Now, when you have a very high carbohydrate meal, it raises the blood glucose level and triggers the release of insulin. Insulin dependent protein phosphatase dephosphorylates ACC. Remember, ACC uh, is usually phosphorylated, and when ACC is phosphorylated, it is in an inactive form. That means the, it's not active as an enzyme. Once insulin activates a phosphatase, it uh, phosphorylates ACC, which results in an active ACC that converts acetyl-CoA to melanyl-CoA. Now, in addition to making fatty acids, melanyl-CoA also has another job. It inhibits the enzyme carnitine acyl transferase 1. This prevents fatty acid into entering the mitochondrial matrix. Now, when blood glucose level drop between meals, glucagon is released, and glucagon release activates CAMP-dependent protein kinase A. We have seen this pathway before, right? Now, this uh, phosphorylates ACC. So, when ACC is active, uh, it is not phosphorylated, but when PKA is active, PKA phosphorylates ACC and makes it inactive. Uh, what is the result of this? The concentration of melanyl-CoA falls because ACC is not active anymore, right? And um, the inhibition of fatty acid entry into mitochondria is relieved and fatty acids enter the mitochondrial matrix and become the major fuel. Because glucagon also triggers the mobilization of fatty acids in adipose tissue, a supply of fatty acids begin, begin to arrive in the blood. 
The mitochondrial matrix is the major site of fatty acid oxidation in animal cells. But in certain cells, other compartments also contain enzymes capable of oxidizing fatty acids to acetyl-CoA by a pathway similar but not identical to the mitochondria. In plant cells, the major site of beta oxidation is not mitochondria but peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are organelles found in both animals and plant cells. Uh, now the major difference between the fatty acid oxidation that happens in mitochondria and peroxisome is this. The mitochondrial acyl-CoA dehydrogenase passes electrons into the respiratory chain via electron transferring flavoprotein. The energy is captured as ATP. But in peroxisomes or glyoxal, uh, glyoxisomes, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase passes electrons directly to the molecular oxygen. Energy is thus released as heat and hydrogen peroxide uh, that is formed as a result of converting molecular oxygen to hydrogen peroxide gets eliminated by an enzyme called as catalase. So this slide shows the major difference between a mitochondrion and a peroxisome or a glyoxisome. A peroxisome is also a glyoxisome when the enzymes for glyoxylate cycle are present. Now, if you look at the major difference on the left is a mitochondrion and the right is a peroxisome, right? Uh, so the electrons that come out of the first enzyme, right, uh, through FADH2 enters the respiratory chain. Uh, and in the peroxisome, this electron these electrons are used to convert oxygen to hydrogen peroxide. Um, <clears throat> this hydrogen peroxide is a strong and potentially damaging oxidant and is immediately cleaved to water and oxygen by an enzyme called as catalase. Recall that in mitochondria, the electrons removed in the first oxidation step pass through the respiratory chain to oxygen to produce water. And this process is accompanied by ATP synthesis. In peroxisomes, the energy released in the first oxidative step of fatty acid breakdown is not conserved as ATP, but is dissipated as heat. Shown here are the different subunit structures of the enzymes of beta oxidation pathway in the mitochondrial system and the peroxisomal or glyoxisomal system. On the left, is uh, the mitochondrial system uh, and shown here is the trifunctional protein that has three enzyme activities in two subunits that are membrane associated. Uh, now if you remember the three enzymes are enzyme 4, enzyme 3 and enzyme 2 which is shown. Uh, the description is given here in the bottom. Um, now, uh, this specific system in mitochondria works on long chain fatty acids. If you remember, for the short chain fatty acids, these four enzymes are soluble enzymes in the matrix. On the right are the beta oxidation enzymes of peroxisomes and glyoxisomes. Uh, in this case, the enzymes form a complex of proteins one of which contain four enzymatic activities in a single polypeptide chain. The first enzyme, that is acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, uh, is a single polypeptide chain. Uh, the multifunctional protein, the multifunctional protein contains the second and third enzyme activities, that is the enoyl-CoA hydratase and the N-beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase activities. Uh, in addition, enzyme 5 and enzyme 6 are the enzymes that are responsible um, for the beta oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. Remember the two additional auxiliary enzymes required uh, for the cis to trans conversion um, as well as the enzyme that has the NADPH activity. Um, those two enzymes are also in this multifunctional protein uh, that is shown here. However, Enzyme 4, that is thylase, is a separate enzyme in the glyoxosomal or the peroxisomal system.